All right, this tutorial is gonna teach you how as a teacher, you could create a group, have students join your group, and then start being able to collaborate with your group. Step one, you've logged in, you've created an account, you've logged into Soundtrap. This here up here is gonna get you back to the homepage if you ever get lost. This is your settings. Right now you're gonna see it says my projects and it will give you the projects that kids or other people have given you. But what you wanna do is you wanna go over to my groups first. You're gonna create a group, you click on create a group and let's just say my music class. You create that group and it gives you a password. Now where it says actions, you could rename the group or delete the group but right now we wanna invite people to the group so we're gonna click on my music class and once we click on the thing that says my music class, it'll say add user. You're gonna click on where it says add user. You can give people the link to Soundtrap and then they just type in the code. This works really well with cell phones and iPads. You could type in an email address and a temporary password. And what will happen is that the student uh, will get that and they could get into Soundtrap, which I'll show you in a second, or the teacher who whoever, if you wanna add a co-teacher or a student teacher, or you could just invite your whole entire Google Classroom or other files here to, to Soundtrap so you don't have to type in every single one. But just for this exercise, let's just type in an email address. So we're gonna type in online music student, let's just, this is a pretend student, dot nyc at gmail.com. All right, and let's invite this student. So we're gonna type in band rocks, type in a password, one, two, three, that'll be their password and we're inviting them as a student. We're gonna click on create user. Now, it says online music student dot NYC Gmail has been created with a password band rocks. Now let's go over to the student point of view. The student point of view, this is their Gmail and this is the pretend student. They'll receive an email that says Soundtrap, your Soundtrap for Education account. The student will click on that account and you'll notice that it has their email and their temporary password. Ask the student to copy the password and when they click on login, it'll get them to the Soundtrap website. Now, it'll say join now, that's not where the, you want the student to go. You wanna go where, to where it says log in or it'll automatically log in for you. Uh, it says online music student .nyc at gmail.com, put in the password and log in. So now the student is on there. The student will be able to create a new password. So let's have the student create a new password. Let's do band rocks. 321 instead, so just kind of the backwards, ban rocks 321, and once they've done the new password, the student can start creating. They'll see this, they'll see that the interface looks almost like the teachers, and the student will go to where it says enter studio. This is how the student will create their first project. They'll click on music, and when they click on music, they're gonna get a whole bunch of instructional videos that will hit them at first. And then after they watch those instructional videos, they will be on this screen here and they're gonna title their first song. Let's call it my song number one. The next part, so the teacher can actually see what's going on, they're gonna click on collaborate or share and they're gonna share that with their teacher. So they're gonna invite a teacher. And the teacher's name will pretty much automatically come up because uh, you're the one that invited them. Click invite and from the teacher point of view, the teacher will actually receive the invitation. So let's go back to the teacher's screen to see if that actually worked. Here's the teacher's screen. Let me close out of this. I'm just gonna click on this top left corner. This takes me back to the home page. And you'll see it says online music student NYC invites you to my song number one. The teacher will accept it. And you could get notifications or not notifications. I'm gonna say no for right now. And there you go. Now the teacher can actually see what the kid is doing. Right now the kid has done absolutely nothing. Let's go back to the other screen. This is the kid's point of view. Let's start with the first project, which is a simple one gonna ask the kids to just create loops. They're gonna click on this loop button up top here, this purple loop button, and let's have them create a drum loop. They're gonna 
Go over here, and these are different drum beats they could preview. If it says full, that's the full drum beat. And they could scroll down to look for another beat. And then once they find the beat they like, they could either double click on it or click and drag to get the beat on to the, 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 the timeline. And now you'll notice that it's copied the beat twice and then the top part here, which is purple, is where the beat's gonna loop. All right, I'm gonna hit pause for right now. You could hit the space bar or pause. And let's ask, let's say the first project after they copy that, the next step would be to drag and make the loop twice as long. So this will be the next project. Now the beat's gonna be twice as long. And let's have them also click and drag with the looper up top. So now the beat is twice as long. And just keep on repeating, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say that's the first project. Now, if you go back to the teacher's page, the teacher sees absolutely nothing at this point. Right now, it's still a blank screen. And you're like, okay, well, that's kind of weird because I thought we just shared. What you have to do, let's go back to the student screen, is the student has to go back to the blue button or whatever it is with the people in it, and they have to click sync. Sync will sync their project with your project. Let's go back to the teacher screen and you'll see that now the teacher, if the teacher clicks on the blue button, it'll say your collaborators made updates. The teacher needs to sync it and now the teacher can see the updates the student did. Cool, and the teacher can say something like, great job. And the student, let's go back to the student screen, can say, thanks. And that is how you start your first project. So let me review. First, you share the link with the code, or you can invite them through Google Classroom, or you could just invite them directly through an email. And then once they get onto the screen, you wanna make sure that they actually title the song and that they actually share it with you. These things that say share or collaborate, they'll uh, make sure that they actually put your name. They hit the plus sign and put your name on there so you can start communicating back and forth with you. You know that they've started the project and you're ready to go. Hope this was helpful.